Hi everyone, it's Melissa from Wise Woman Healing, and I have a question for you. Do you ever give yourself a challenging reading or prayer rule? The reason why I'm asking about that is because I just... I just got done watching an amazing video called uh, Why Every Christian Should Have a Prayer Rule with Father Josiah. And I'll put a link down to it. Um, so when before I became an Orthodox Christian and I was going around looking for things, I came across this website and I don't think he's up anymore. I don't think his website was up. Anyway, I was learning about things like Meat Fair Week and Cheese Fair Week and reading the Psalms and all this stuff. And I thought, uh, what are you, what is all this? What are you talking about? And so I took up a challenge, a personal challenge to read the Psalms in a week. Hang on. I'm trying to find it. Anyway, so um, the, the point of that reading plan in the Psalms was to get you through reading the whole Psalms, the whole book of Psalms in a week. And uh, honestly, if you have something like this, the Agpea, I think you can get through the Psalms in a day. get through the Psalms in a day. And St. Benedict maybe was talking about how they used to read the Psalms in a day and now uh, they can hardly get a monastic to read them in a week. Uh, so in the video, they were talking about St. Seraphim of Sarov and his reading plan of the New Testament. And they said that he read the New Testament completely through in one week. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. I am not a fast reader, but I want to try it. So here's, here's the plan. I know um, not only am I writing in cursive, but I don't have the best handwriting. So we'll see how much you can read. And I'll just read to you what it is. On Sunday, it's St. Matthew. Monday, St. Mark. Tuesday, St. Luke. Wednesday, St. John. Thursday, the Acts of the Apostle. Friday, all of the epistles, which are the books between the Acts and Revelation. And I wrote, you know, just to make sure in case you don't know, it's Romans 1 and 2, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians 1 and 2, Thessalonians 1 and 2, Timothy, Titus, Philemon. And then on Saturday, he read the book of Revelation. And my dear Christians, please, for the love of all that is holy, it is pronounced revelation, not revelations. It wasn't multiple revelations. It was one long revelation. Okay? Mow your stuff. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, St. Seraphim of Sarov. Yeah. All of the Gospels from Sunday to Wednesday. Then the Acts of the Apostles on Thursday. Friday, all of the epistles, and Saturday, the book of Revelation. All right, so I'm going to try. I mean, I, like I said, I'm a slow reader. I might not be able to get through the book of Revelation in one day. I mean, this is what it, this is what it looks like. Okay, and not only that, but it's a hard book to read. Now, if you're studying the Bible, look at that. Look at that. That's the commentary. So you have like a tiny paragraph of the actual scripture and then three quarters of the page is commentary but on this page it's reversed you have three quarters of it is scripture and then a quarter of it is commentary but that's how the osb is orthodox study bible i love this bible and i really think everybody who wants to be orthodox should get one then in the back of the book they have prayers and so you can sit here and develop a prayer rule in the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth. You've heard me pray that. That's a prayer to Holy Spirit. 
morning prayers, Nicene Creed, uh, the Psalms for you to pray and read if you want to, the Gospel and Epistle, intercessory prayers, benediction, and so on and so forth. Evening prayers. I, I mean, being a Christian is, it's work. You know, you don't sit back on your cloud. Oh, I made it. I don't have to do anything. Oh, I'll develop a prayer rule. And this video is so good about talking about that. Develop a prayer rule and um, a reading plan. And you don't have to read the entire book or the entire New Testament in one week. Uh, but you can do something like read the Psalms in 30 days. There's a reading plan out there for that. Uh, read the book of Psalms. Yeah, read the book of Psalms in one month or 30 days. Um, you could look for a weekly. Like read the Psalms in a week. Like give yourself something challenging to do. Something that will take you away from the internet take you away from the world and consume your time the way scrolling on the internet would consume your time so that you are front and center with God and not trolling people on the internet. I know not all of you who are reading or listening to this are trolling people on the internet, but you know, I had some disturbing experiences yesterday of, of um, just, oh gosh, the Protestant troll army was out in force yesterday across the internet well, actually on the 15th and 16th, because yesterday was the 16th, um, especially on the 15th, because people were posting things about the Annunciation of Mary. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The Assumption of Mary, where she was taken into heaven by Jesus. And boy, a lot of Protestants were triggered by that. And all I can say is, what do you care? You know, what do you care if the Catholics are honoring Mary? We're not saying that you have to. We're not saying that you know, or, or, but you're sitting here saying that nobody can do it and they just want to worship the Lord in peace, how they want to worship the Lord. And you're trying to tell them how to walk out their faith. Catholics are not Protestants. Uh, duh, obviously. But here you are going around on the internet trying to fix them and make sure that they are doing Christianity the way that you think they should be doing Christianity. Back off. Leave them alone leave us alone. And you're so vile in your comments. And I think, wow, I, I don't think Jesus would approve of how you're treating people on the internet. And you sit there and I mean, I've seen people justify the most heinous things and their treatment of people because somewhere in their Christian walk, they were told that it was okay to be a bigot toward Catholics. It is not okay. Just cut it out. It, just do a hard prayer rule. Do a hard reading rule so that you stay off the internet and leave people alone and become more familiar with God. Oh my goodness, people out there saying that Mary was not the mother of God. That nonsense is called Nestorianism, and that was abolished in the Council of Nice was it Nicaea or Ephesus in 431. They dealt with Nestorian, Nestorianism in 431 AD. Where have you been that you don't know your own religion? Yeah, I, I'm being kind of grumpy about it because y'all are sitting here talking about stuff that is more Islamic than Christian. Nestorian than Christian. It is not Christian to say that Mary is not the mother of God. I don't know who you're listening to and who's teaching you, but you need to find better leadership. You'll find that in the Orthodox Christian Church. But if you're listening to somebody who says that, or they say, Paul wasn't writing to us, he was writing to this group of Christians or that group of Christians, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like the serpent in the garden. Did God really say that? And, and you sound just like him. And I'm pulling out the hard stuff today. I'm sorry, but not sorry, because enough is enough. The her heresies and fallacies of Protestants out there, and they get so nasty about it, like y'all invented Christianity, and you did not. So here we go. Uh, you know, that's it. Just 
develop something that keeps you in the word more than you are on the internet. Like being trolling people on the internet net on the internet is not good for your sanctification and your salvation. It's not. Okay. Oh, I can hardly wait to see the comments on this one. All right. I hope that if you are a fellow Orthodox Christians, hold on. <coughs> I hope that if you are fellow Orthodox Christians that, and you have not done so already, that you will develop a prayer rule and uh, a reading plan or something out there. You know, this is just St. Seraphim of Sarov's reading plan, and he was a monastic, so he had a lot more time on his hands, I'm, I'm guessing, than a lot of us do. But if we cut back on the technology and the electronics that we use. And um, I know going, you have to make sacrifices if you want to do the hard things, socializing and doing things. Um, <clears throat> you can do the hard things. You can do the hard things and have a prayer rule and a reading rule and just really get in the word. And I'm not saying that you're not, but I'm just saying that for those who wish to go deeper and you're not sure where to start, I'm suggesting this as a starting place. If you hear rustling, I'm dusting. I'm dusting this while I talk to you. Uh, so yeah, just, just keep that in mind that um, your faith is going to be what you make it. And I hope that you make it something wonderful and powerful and good. And not something that makes the world proud but something that makes the Lord proud. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, thank you for stopping by. Please like, and subscribe, help support the channel. Thanks.